Good morning. Welcome to Calvary Lutheran Church. So happy to welcome you back into worship and to welcome indeed so many back into worship for the first time over the last couple of weeks. It's been a great blessing and a great reason to celebrate and praise God for his continued work in our presence. Today, as we mentioned in the Easter announcements, we begin our sermon series on prayer. Calvary praise. Ah, oh, that people that we had that reputation in the community, that we are a praying congregation and that the prayers of this congregation were powerful and active, not just in individual lives or in small pockets of the congregation, but in the entire Indianapolis area. Today, as we begin this prayer emphasis over the next four weeks, we talk about specifically praise. Praise, how does praise fit into prayer? So whether you are a novice prayer or a veteran, we invite you to join along on, on this four-week series as we think on prayer and its value, but especially talk about, well, how do we pray and what does it mean for us? Today in our worship, as we think on all of these things, I now invite you to stand for our invocation and opening sentence. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Alleluia. We know that Christ being raised from the dead will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. Alleluia. We join in our opening hymn this joyful Easter tide. Help is in the name of the Lord. May heaven and earth. If you, O Lord, kept a record of sins, O Lord, who could stand? But with you there is forgiveness, therefore you are feared. Since we are gathered to hear God's word and call upon him in prayer and praise, let us first consider our unworthiness and confess before God and one another that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed, and that we cannot free ourselves from our sinful condition. Together as his people, 
Let us take refuge in the infinite mercy of God, our Heavenly Father, seeking His grace for the sake of Christ, and saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Almighty God, have mercy upon us, forgive us our sins, and lead us to everlasting life. Amen. Almighty God, in His mercy, has given His Son to die for you. For His sake, He forgives you all of your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all of your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, grant that we who have celebrated the Lord's resurrection may by your grace confess in our life and conversation that Jesus is Lord and God, praising him who, who he is and what he has done for us. To the same Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. Amen. Congregation may be seated for our reading. So our first reading for this second Sunday of Easter comes to us from the fourth chapter of the book of the Acts of the Apostles. When Peter and John were released, they went to their friends and reported what the chief priests and the elders had said to them. And when they heard it, they lifted their voices together to God and said, Sovereign Lord, who made the heaven and the earth and the sea and everything in them, who through the mouth of our father David, your servant, said by the Holy Spirit, Why did the Gentiles rage and the peoples plot in vain? The kings of the earth set themselves and the rulers were gathered together against the Lord and against his anointed. For truly in this city there were gathered together against your holy servant Jesus, whom you appointed both Herod and Pontius Pilate, along with the Gentiles and the people of Israel, to do whatever your hand and your plan had predestined to take place. And now, Lord, look upon their threats and grant to your servants to continue to speak your word with all boldness, while you stretch out your hand to heal, and signs and wonders are performed to the name of your holy servant, Jesus. And when they had prayed, the place in which they were gathered together was shaken. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and continued to speak the word of God with boldness. And the full number of those who believed were of one heart and soul. And no one said that any of the things that belonged to him was his own. But they had everything in common. And with great power, the apostles were giving their testimony to the resurrection of our Lord Jesus, and great grace was upon them all. There was not a needy person among them, for as many as were owners of lands or houses sold them and brought the proceeds of what was sold and laid it at the apostles' feet, and it was distributed to each as any had need. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our second reading comes from Psalm 148. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord from the heavens. Praise Him in the heights. Praise Him, all His angels. Praise Him, all His hosts. Praise Him, sun and moon. Praise Him, all you shining stars. Praise Him, you highest heavens and you waters above the heavens. Let them praise the name of the Lord. For He commanded and they were created. 
and he established them forever and ever. He gave a decree, and it shall not pass away. Praise the Lord from the earth, you great sea creatures and all deeps, fire and hail, snow and mist, stormy wind fulfilling his word, mountains and hills full, fruit trees and all cedars, beasts and all livestock, creeping things and flying birds, kings of the earth and all peoples, princes and all rulers of the earth, Young men and maidens together, old men and children, let them praise the name of the Lord, for his name alone is exalted. His majesty is above earth and heaven. He was raised up, he has raised up a horn for his people. Praise for all his saints, for the people of Israel who are near to him. Praise the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand. Holy Gospel according to St. John chapter 20. On the evening of that day, the first day of the week, the doors being locked where the disciples were for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples were glad when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, even so I am sending you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of anyone, they are forgiven. If you withhold forgiveness from anyone, it is withheld. Now, Thomas, one of the twelve, called the twin, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see in his hands the mark of the nails, and place my finger into the mark of the nails, and place my hand into his side, I will never believe. Eight days later, his disciples were inside again, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were locked, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands, and put out your hand and place it in my side. Do not disbelieve, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of the disciples which are not written in this book, but these are written so that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in his name. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, O Christ. We just had a chance to hear Thomas's own confession of who Jesus is, but now in this service we take a moment to confess ourselves, who Jesus is and who the Father is and who the Holy Spirit is for us. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. 
and the third day he rose again according to the scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. You may be seated. At this time, we'll take a brief moment in the service for our children's message. Children of the congregation are welcome to come on up, right up here. Good morning. I know there's only four of you, but I know we can do better. Let's, let's try one more time. Good morning. That was better. Good job. You guys did great. Thank you for such good work saying good morning. Today, in our sermon and in the children's message, I want to talk about praise. Praise. Now, I just got done praising you guys. Good job. You did great. But today, as we talk about praise, we're going to talk not just about praising one another. We're going to talk about praising God. So I have a question for you. If, if I have trouble with the pipes in my house, who should I call? A plumber. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Yeah, I probably shouldn't be doing too much work with the pipes myself. I don't know all that about, much about plumbing. If I have trouble with the electrical outlets in my home that I can't figure out myself, who should I call? A plumber is not right, but that's a good answer. Do you know? Yeah, somebody who knows a little bit more about electrical outlets, maybe an electrician, maybe a handyman. I've certainly done that before. Well, how about if I have trouble with bugs? Who, who do I call? Pest control, yeah, a terminator. Somebody who's able to take care of the bug problem and get it really handled. Whenever I have a problem with something that I can't fix myself, I go to someone who can. Someone who's, who's able to fix my problem, who knows a bit more than me, who maybe has, you might say, a little more power than me. Today, as we talk about prayer, we're going to talk about praise. Because when we go to God in prayer and ask him for anything at all, it's kind of like going to the electrician for help with an electrical outlet or going to a plumber for help with plumbing. It's like going to somebody who has more power than you because God certainly has more power than any of us so that he can help fix our problems. Why do we praise God in prayer? Well, we praise God in prayer because he has more power. It's our way of saying, God, I don't think I can handle this on my own. But I know that you can. And there are many times in the Bible and in our lives where God shows that power to us. It's especially appropriate that we talk about praising God and God's power after Easter. For what amazing thing did God do on Easter for us? Yeah, he rose from the grave. He defeated death and the devil. He rose to life after he had died on the cross for us. We praise God for things like this. God, it's, it's amazing that you rose from the grave and that you promise life for us too. You promise, God promises, to raise us from the dead when we die too. These are reasons to praise him. 
And so we're going to talk about prayer and praise quite a bit more with your parents. But let's practice prayer and praise in prayer together right now. Let's bow our heads. Dear Heavenly Father, we praise you for all of the amazing things that you have done for us. You created the heavens and the earth and you created us. And you didn't just leave us there, but you over and over throughout history have loved us and shown us great mercy and faithfulness. Thank you for all of your faithfulness. Thank you for all of your love, even when we might not be as good as maybe we should be, as loving or as faithful as we should be. Help us to love you and be faithful to you and help us to love others and be faithful to them too, that they might know your love and faithfulness every day of their life, just as we do. These things we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, you guys can return to your seat while we begin our next hymn, O oh, Sing to the Lord. Grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God our Father and the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Today, I'd like to begin this message by talking about how far we have come in the last year. And, and indeed we have, not just from blissful ignorance to a sudden realization of how often we touch our face or who in the office washes their hands and who doesn't, or how annoying it can be to wear a mask all the time but from, well, being together to being separated, from no video ministry to a really robust video ministry here at Calvary. How many of you are now back here after being separated not just from, from one another, but in some sense from God? I know that many of you have said, man, it's, it's kind of difficult to remember to log on to the video stream and to check out the video every week in a way that going to church just felt natural. Indeed, we've come a long way. We've been blessed in many, many ways, 
from the communications ministry's hard work to reach out at the time, to outreach's yard signs and the little magnets, to fellowships drive through and the upcoming drive through that we're about to do. We've had Compassion Ministry reach out to the community and to our members in countless little ways, and Sunday School has turned itself inside out more than once to try to adapt to the needs of our families and reach out to the community. We have been abundantly blessed, and everything I just listed just brushes the surface of how much has been done, how many countless volunteer hours have gone into this pandemic year to meet the needs of the community. In a year where even business as usual has been more difficult than normal, more tiring than normal, I don't think it's too far to say, even exhausting, many of you have gone above and beyond to meet these needs. And I so appreciate that fact. I praise God for that fact. See, it, it might sound like I'm praising you, and in a sense I am. But today as we come out of Easter, as we celebrate Easter today, I'd like to highlight how it's, it's not just appropriate right now to celebrate, well, that Jesus rose from the grave, but that God is continuing to work among us. He's continuing to bless this congregation with faithful workers, with innovative minds to reach out to the community. We praise God in the midst of these many blessings. And I pray that they have indeed been a blessing to you, whether it be just video ministry or a caring call that you received, whatever it may be. I pray that you have felt as blessed as I have in the midst of this pandemic by a faithful God who is working in the hearts of so many individuals. But all of that said, I think it's, it's a very natural question to ask. If we just want to celebrate progress and blessings and Easter, is prayer a really necessary add-on? Is, is prayer the most natural way to make that celebration, to lift that praise to God? Why not just talk about worship in the midst of this time where we're coming out of the pandemic, things are looking a little better, more people are in worship? Why not just talk about worship, you might ask? Well, if, if you're here wondering why we're following up Easter with prayer, if you're a little skeptical, let me, let me just encourage you with, with a brief story. See, this all started not just with the idea that, man, I, I don't pray as often as I'd like to. And, and yet in the pandemic, I've prayed a lot more than usual. Let's not stop. That's not the start of this idea. The start of this story was actually a, a little simpler, and it was that three separate ministry teams in the span of just a couple of days came to me concerned about prayer. Unprompted, uncoordinated, three separate ministry teams came to me and said, hey, um, can we help out the prayer life of the congregation in the midst of the pandemic? And, and when that kind of coincidence happens, and, and let, me, let me be clear, it's, it's definitely a coincidence we, I don't have ministry teams talking to me about prayer normally. When that kind of coincidence happens, I perk up, I listen, and I say maybe it's not just a coincidence. Maybe this is the Holy Spirit at work in the hearts of our congregation members. Compassion came interested in helping out the prayer page. Communications certainly came interested in helping out the prayer page, wondering, well, why isn't everybody using it? This is a great resource. It looks like it, it would be a great benefit to the congregation. And then men's Bible study came and said, hey, uh, we've got another great resource that I'd really like to see us use more of. We're going to commit to reading through the prayer list every week and praying for the people on the prayer list. We don't do this as much as we think maybe we should. Three separate ministry teams in the span of 
a, a couple of days, came interested in prayer, and so I listened. And if you, like me, are perking up and listening just a little more, you understand why this got me thinking about prayer. Thinking about this idea of prayer and whether or not I pray as often as I should and how prayer might bless us. This idea solidified even further as I was planning for the weeks after Easter. And I saw as I looked at the lectionary readings, a really, really odd coincidence. If you've ever heard the acronym ACTS as an idea for, for helping explain how we pray, ACTS is, is an acronym which stands for Adoration, Confession, Thanksgiving, and Supplication. Supplication is asking God for things. This is an acronym we give to confirmation students, but it's not so basic as to be useless to adults and to anyone who's praying. This, is, this model helps us understand how we pray, what is included in a typical prayer, in a good prayer as well. When I looked at this acronym and I looked at the lectionary readings, those readings that are assigned for the weeks immediately following Easter, I was floored. Did you notice the themes of our readings today? Acts chapter 4, the disciples go to God in prayer, and there is like three verses at the very beginning of that prayer which are all praise. Psalm 148, the psalm assigned for this Sunday. Man, praise is really fitting as a description for that psalm. Adoration of God is really fitting as a description of that psalm. And then, then you have Thomas's beautiful testimony. Perhaps the very first time he ever called Jesus this, my Lord and my God. Praise fills this reading, the set of readings. Next Sunday, we're going to get a set of readings filled with confession. And the following Sunday, we're going to get a set of readings filled with thanksgiving. And the following Sunday, we're going to get a set of readings, you guessed it, filled with supplication, asking God for things. The Holy Spirit is at work. I am confident. And I say all of this because I know if, if you're like me, you might hear, oh, a prayer emphasis we talked about prayer a lot in the past. Is it really going to be worth my time? I, I say this to, to, be, to be as open and honest as possible. Sometimes I roll my eyes at sermon themes, sermon series themes. I want you to, to buy in a little bit to this sermon series theme not just to checking out the prayer page or joining in to our Friday prayer event, but to pray, to reconsider your life of prayer, whether you are a prayer warrior, currently praying desperately for something in your life, or you're completely new to prayer. Hopefully this series will give you an opportunity to rethink your prayer life enliven your prayer life, or at least give a couple nuggets of wisdom to enrich it. Today, as we think about acts, we of course start with praise, adoration, that act of, of worshiping God. But we'll also talk about how, how we, we praise someone naturally, especially praise God naturally, because planning to praise Going into a, a, a situation where you plan to praise someone feels strange, and we should acknowledge this. But also, I'd like to talk about how praise fits into prayer, and hopefully over the course of this message, we'll answer all three of those. But first, first and foremost, I want to talk about what praise is. What is praise? This is a word which I think is, we, we all think we know what it is, but if someone asked us, what is praise, it would be difficult to answer. Just one of those easy to describe, hard to define words. Well, I thought about this a long time, hopefully so that you don't have to. And the best answer that I came up with is this. To praise God is to talk about his character 
more than his actions. Now, why is it more his character than his actions? Partially because we have a category for talking about God's actions already. That's the, the thanksgiving category in the ACTS acronym. But praising God is talking about his character. So, so we're going to talk about things like, God, you are good. God, you are loving. God, you are awesome. God, you are faithful. We're going to use all of these things to talk about God as we pray and praise Him. But let's be clear. Describing God, describing His character is not sufficient. Because the demons believe and they shudder, we are told in Scripture. Even the demons believe and they shudder. Even the demons could describe God and say, you are loving, you are faithful, you are good. We are not. We, in praising God, want to not just describe God's character, but delight in God's character. To say, this is who God is, and that is good news for me. If we are to praise God, we want to to be those who, who delight in His faithfulness, His goodness, His love, His kindness, His gentleness. We want to delight in, revel in, have joy in these things. And again, it's not easy to plan to have joy, to plan to delight. So let's dive in further to those questions. It's especially awkward to plan to praise God because He is above us. Here's what I mean. When I go to praise my son, it feels totally natural. Great job. You got that exactly right. You know your alphabet so well. I'm so glad that you're growing up to be so big and so smart. Natural, right? Normal. You wouldn't bat, bat an eye at me saying that even in your presence, as effusive as it was. If I were to go to my wife, not talking about someone below me now, let's be clear. If she, let's be very clear, especially if she's watching online. Someone who's at my level, it's also natural for me to praise her. It's totally normal. Now, I probably don't do it as much as I should just like I probably don't praise God as much as I should. But it's totally normal, and you wouldn't bat an eye if I talked about how great a mom she is, how faithful she is, how hardworking she is. These would all be normal. But if I, if I talked about Pastor Ebert that way, or if you talked about your boss that way in your presence, this might be a little weirder, right? Right? Man, I love how you boss us around. I love how you coordinate everything that goes on here. It is so great. If you tell your boss this, it begins to seem not like praise, but brown nosing, right? You're sucking up to him. This is why it feels so awkward to praise God at times. Not just because we don't have that feeling of delight, but that we wonder about our ulterior, ulterior motives. We wonder about what, what's the goal here? Is my heart really in the right place? And there's not an easy solution to the problem if your heart is not in the right place when you're trying to praise God in prayer. You can't flip a switch and say, oh, I'm not going to do that anymore. It's hard work, heart work. But this is, is so essential to our life of prayer. It's one of the reasons that prayer fits so well into the act of praise, because it is, it is meditative, thoughtful work to accurately, really, genuinely praise God. That awkwardness should not prevent us from doing it, because there are such great benefits to praise. Benefits not for God, He really doesn't need our praise, but as our psalm said today, all creatures should praise. And I think it's because all creatures benefit from praising their Creator. 
Why? Well, two good motives that you might have for praising God. Number one, true praise helps us acknowledge our lowliness and God's power. This is, is beneficial in part because it's a simple recognition of the truth. Compared to God, we are lowly, we are small, we are worthless even. But more practically, when we see our lowliness clearly, when we are humble, we have a chance to recognize that God is not only powerful, but willing to use His power for us. We're able to recognize in that that we have needs that He can meet and wants to meet. And then we can come to Him so that He will meet those needs. We can stop running from Him in our lives and come to Him so that He blesses us as He so wants to do. So this is our first benefit, that true praise helps us acknowledge our lowliness in God's power. But the second benefit is that true praise is an exercise of faith. Here's what I mean for that one. Consider the question of why we have faith in God at all. Why is it? Is it just that He created the heavens and the earth? Is it just that He has shown faithfulness to people in the past? No. We have faith in God because He has shown faithfulness to us. He has loved us us. It's our conviction that He loves us, that He is good, that He is faithful. Those very things that we would praise Him for that leads us to have faith in Him. Praise then becomes an exercise of our faith. When we praise God, when we sit down to figure out how we're going to praise God, it's then that we figure out what our faith in Him is in the first place. But there's an added bonus. For if we go to praise Him, plan to praise Him, and we find it's difficult to do so, difficult to say, God, you are faithful, and rather we just just feel resentful, or, or if we, we want to say that God is just and that we're uncomfortable with God's law, if, if we realize these dissonances in ourselves, these, these discomforts in ourselves, it's then that we get the opportunity to explore them. Only if we plan to praise God and find it's difficult do we realize these difficulties for what they are, opportunities to dig into prayer, to dig into the Scriptures, to work with one another, to explore our faith in God and grow in it. Planning to praise in our individual prayers or public prayers becomes an opportunity for better understanding not just God, but our own faith as well. So, all of this said, this brings us back to that natural question, why pray at Easter time. Well, as we said in the children's message, it's a great opportunity to do so, especially around Easter, because God's faithfulness and His love and His power are so vividly on display, at Easter especially. Even in in the story of Thomas that we just heard, that vivid, that love and power and patience is on display for the sake of simply Thomas, one of the disciples, Jesus did not have to come back to prove His faithfulness or power or care or even His resurrection to Thomas, but He does. But I have another answer. Why pray during praise? Well, when we pray during praise, our praise becomes the reason for everything else that we pray as well. The praise that we give to God is is the reason that we ask for anything at all. Think Think of this prayer. God, you are faithful, but I am not. Thank you for continuously showing me faithfulness throughout my life, even when I have been negligent and flighty in my faithfulness toward you. 
Help me to be faithful. Help me to be faithful not just to you, but to my friends and family as well. This, this prayer that I just recited has every one of those four points of the ACTS paradigm. God, you are faithful. Praise. I am not. Confession. Thank you for your faithfulness. Thanksgiving. Help me to be faithful. Supplication. Asking. Each of these parts are present, but think, notice how the, pra- the prayer makes no sense at all if you take the praise out. If you take the praise out of that prayer, it's, it's, a, it's a meaningless prayer. If, if I go to, to somebody and say, you're not faithful at all, but man, I'm not either, and I just want you to be faithful to me instead. It doesn't work. Praise is, is essential to our life of prayer. And if, if you haven't thought this through before, this, this fact through before, if you haven't noticed the, the ways that, that good prayers typically run, they all have some element of praise, acknowledging who God is and what He has done. So, prayer and praise naturally go together. Praise and prayer naturally fit with Easter. I therefore encourage you to not just go to the website prayer page, to not just check out the Friday prayer event that I'll talk about later, but to give praise a shot in your prayer life. And if you don't have a prayer life, especially during this prayer emphasis, give prayer a shot. Commit to it once a week. Decide a time now, ideally, so that you don't forget later, so that time doesn't get away from you, and commit to praying at least once a week, ideally once a day, maybe multiple times a day. Take a step up from where you are, at very least, and commit to prayer. As you pray, may our Lord, who has proven His love for us and His faithfulness to us at the cross, and who has proven His power to help us, and to enliven us in the empty tomb, bless you abundantly. May he grant you the very peace of God, which passes all understanding and will keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. All right, just a couple of announcements. Of course, I want to announce the prayer page, clcs.org slash prayer. You have an opportunity on that prayer page to see prayers that other people have, grant, have offered. The compassion team, the prayer team, the communications team has a, have done a great job of adding prayers to that page so that when you go to it after the service, you'll see plenty of different prayers that you can pray for right now. But uh, you can always add prayers yourself. You can always be blessed by that opportunity to pray yourself through that prayer page. So please do check it out. Now, I mentioned also a Friday prayer event at 11, at 11 a.m. this Friday and for the next four Fridays throughout this prayer campaign. We'd love to have you join us for that Friday prayer event. It'll be on Facebook live, but if you don't get a chance to check it out live, stop by Facebook. It'll be posted just like all of our other, uh, all of our other videos are posted online. Now, second... Sunday School announcement. We are very excited to be splitting Sunday School in three parts. We have preschool through, sec- through first grade, second grade through fourth grade, and fifth grade through eighth grade Sunday School opportunities now. Um, drop off preschool through fourth grade in the cafeteria, fifth through eighth grade in the gym. We're very excited for the ways that this is going to better meet the needs of our families, now that people have begun attending Sunday school more regularly, and that room has been fuller and fuller and fuller. We hope that it's a blessing to you and your family as well. Invite your friends to come join us uh, in the midst of these changes. One other change I'd like to mention for Sunday school in particular is we've had to make the difficult decision to discontinue online Sunday school uh, in order to focus our efforts more fully on meeting the needs of families, communicating with families in in the midst of all of these changes. Uh, We do intend to continue to offer uh, short Sunday school videos on Facebook and YouTube to bless our community, but we, uh, again, have had to make that difficult decision and prioritize 
our on-site offerings. Finally, mark your calendars for Saturday, May 15th, 11 to 1, 1, 1 p.m. Uh, Fellowship is having a drive-through on that date, and we'd love to have you check it out. Also mark your calendars for VBS, June 21st through 25th. That's 9 to 11.30. More details on both of those events are available in the bulletin. That's it in the way of announcements. So at this time, we go to our Lord in prayer for the prayers of the church. I invite you to stand. So today, as we pray our prayers, each one begins with an affirmation of who God is and who we believe Him to be. Let us now join our hearts before our merciful Father, who bids us to come to Him in prayer, trusting that He will supply us with all that is needful and beneficial for us and for all for whom we pray. God of peace, you promised to protect us and even to crush Satan under your feet. Even now silence the doubts that plague us and deliver us from fear, that believing in you we may know the full comfort of your gracious presence. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer and praise. Exalted Lord, you humbled yourself to death, even death on a cross, Deliver us from pride and humble us so that by your Spirit we might confess our sins and know the peace of a clear conscience. Help us serve you with all of our heart, mind, body, and soul. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer and praise. Lord of the nations, make your church bold in its confession of your name before the world. And give your blessing to all pastors and church workers as they accomplish your bidding in their service to us in your name. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer and praise. King of kings, you establish every throne and every dominion. Guard us from all enemies and bless our nation with good government and good leaders that we enjoy justice before the law, equality of opportunity in the marketplace, and peace in our communities and between the nations. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer and praise. Holy Lord, you do not desire the death of anyone, but that all would reach repentance. Restore those absent from the church's sacramental life and bring to repentance those who have fallen into error and sin. Join us all together at your holy table. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer and praise. God of comfort, Father of compassion, You promise comfort for all our troubles. Grant comfort to the sick, to those suffering troubles of any kind, and to those carrying the burden of grief, that they may know your presence in their hour of need. We especially lift before you Aaron Wampner and Nancy Wegner as they are recovering from surgery this past week. We thank you for safely guiding them through, and we pray that you would continue to restore in them a new life. We pray, O Lord, that you would be with Chris Hyatt, Richard Kirby, and so many others in our ongoing prayers and our prayers for God's peace. May you meet the needs of each of them in your loving care, and may you work mightily within them in body and soul so that we may lift a song of praise to you for your work within our lives. So we know that we do face many who find themselves in physical pain and suffering, but we also know that there are so many who find themselves dealing with spiritual problems and pains and in need of healing. We pray, O oh God, that you would continue to bless your mission. We pray for you to be with Lutherano Indy at Trinity Lutheran Church on the east side. May you continue to bless many through that Hispanic outreach to our Indianapolis area. May you in all things allow your word to bring healing to our lives and wholeness to everything that you have given to us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer and praise. Accept the praise of our lips, the tithes and offerings we bring, and our labors for your glory. Help us not to suffer from ingratitude or pride, but rather to recognize that all we have comes from you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer and praise. Grant to us that we may confidently trust that you will both hear and answer the prayers of your people and supply us with all good things according to your merciful favor. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Hear us, O Lord, as we pray in Jesus' name and as he has taught us. Our Father,
so that our Lord Jesus Christ, in the night that he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way, also, he took the cup after supper. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of all of your sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. That as often as we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus.
Alleluia. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Therefore, go in peace. The Lord is with you. Thanks be to God.